Hi. In this tutorial, we're going to be taking a look at some of the new effects inside of VDMX that are built off of Apple's Vision SDK and Core ML. And from there, we're going to figure out a few ways in which we can combine them to get interesting looks. If you used to use an Xbox Connect or are familiar with that whole process of getting that to work with your Mac, this might be a fun addition that doesn't require additional hardware that is no longer sold. So yeah, stick around. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments below. If you have any other things that you're interested in, tell us. All right, first things first, this background sucks. So I'm just gonna get rid of it. So the first effect that I wanna show you is called the remove background effect, which you can find right here in assets under remove background or it's located in the stylize. So from there, I can just drag it over and you can see it's actually doing a pretty good job of removing the room that I'm in. If you click on transparency mode, it actually cleans up the edges a good bit. One of the few limitations with this that I found is it's not the best for hair and the more unique your background is, the likely it is to cause these glitches. That being said, you can invert the mask which provides a really cool effect, or you can output the mask, right? You can combine the two of them to get a nice mask that you can see has transparency in the preview here. If I want, I can adjust these thresholds. So if I turn that threshold down, I'm gonna be getting more of that noise in the background. And if I turn it up, I might get more around my the edges. So. You're going to want to play with the threshold to figure out how much hair or things like that, that you want to keep. So let's turn that off for a second. A good example of this that you might have seen in like a live concert or at a performance is there might be a DJ on stage and then someone usually sets up like a connect camera that captures the DJ and separates them from the background. And that way, whoever the VJ is or the visual performer, you're able to take that feed and remove the background and then apply additional effects to it. So a good example of that is if I apply another effect, which is the editor effect, you can see how it's isolating me. And then you can go in here and you can tweak those settings to whatever you prefer the most. Another way to go about this is to have multiple layers and use different blend modes to combine the mask that comes out of this layer on a different layer. So let's take a look at that. I'm gonna go up to templates. I'm just gonna choose simple mixer. That's gonna give me a left bin and a right bin, but essentially it's gonna give me like a left side and right side that I can mix between. So let's just take our left side. I'm gonna do a live input. I'm gonna choose my FaceTime camera. I'm gonna mix over and let's go back to here. Let's do remove background that into it. Okay, so with this two-way mixer setup, we basically have two layers, a left layer and a right layer. The left layer is bringing in the FaceTime camera and removing the background. And I can adjust the threshold to, to do that a little bit better. And then the right layer is currently playing this beach loop, which could be anything. And I'm gonna open up the workspace inspector. I'm also hitting command one to Open that up if you're not familiar with that shortcut. It's also available up here in the Windows menu under Workspace Inspector, right there. I'm gonna type in Layer Mask, and I'm gonna grab this one, bring it into the right of X. I'm going to take the mask image and select Left, which is my FaceTime camera, and now you see that my face is overlaid on top of this background. Um, very exciting. And let's move on. Let's add another effect. Let's do circular feedback mask, which is now going to give me some unique elements to play with. Another one I like is the disco spinner. And I'll put a link for this shader on the VidVox website under this tutorial. This one's pretty fun. You can just spin, adjust some of these axes. And we'll just do something like this. We'll make this go to our clock. We'll do measure position. 
we'll open up our clock and we'll just slow it down a little bit. Wow. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, moving on. One of the cool things about the remove background effect is it gives you the ability to add and modify these masks in fun ways. So once you start stacking effects, which you're able to do in so many different ways, you can see the potential for this. Uh, let's go here. You know, I'm just turning these on and off. And notice if I adjust the disco spinner and I bring it in before, you can actually see that that's happening in the background. So let me show you that. Or if I turn off the disco spinner, let me bring up the circular feedback mask and let me switch this over to my FaceTime camera so that the feedback mask is actually just based on the camera. And let's add our transparency mode. If I wanted to, I could adjust things like the scale and you know make this mask bigger, but I think you might get the point. Just to remind you, if we go to layers, you can see that there's the left layer and the right layer. At any point, you can just add more layers. So you can start to compound effects and masks um, with some of the other ones that I've showed you. So I hope that you like this tutorial. This is sort of in line of some of the effects that we have planned coming out for Video Max in the near future. And yeah, if you do anything cool with it, tag us on at vidvox or like leave a comment and send a link. We, we'd love to see what you're doing with this. So thank you. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Peace sign. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> All right.